What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Crypto Roundtable. I'm joined by AJ, one of my boys in this space. If you guys could do us a quick favor, make sure you like this uh, post, repost it, and comment in the right, bottom right-hand corner which meme coin you're most excited about. Now, we do have a special guest today, Reddit Coin, but before we get to them, we just want to talk about the overall meme coin market. But first, AJ, what's going on, and How you doing? And uh, how about this recovery we're, we're having today? Man, absolutely insane. Rodney, so good to have you on here with me, man. We've done this before. Good to hear your voice. Uh, as you all can tell, I'm a bit under the weather, but of course I'm pulling through. I want to be here. I want to uh, you know, put some work in. I also want to learn a little bit about meme coins. I've been a little bit unplugged from you know the straight up meme markets for for a little while you know last week i did uh ufc 300 which was an absolutely amazing time shout out to the v chain team and then you know I, i've literally just been just on just very sick the past couple of days so i have been a little bit unplugged from memes specifically but uh in normal trading uh conditions uh, you know, my normal day trade BS, that has been <clears throat> that has been my, my grind always. And obviously, I'm very excited to see Bitcoin, you know, hold that 61,000, 60,000 level. Uh, if you kind of go back and you look at like when Bitcoin, excuse me, when Bitcoin first ran up, you know, um, you know, when it first got into the 60,000s at the very end of February, uh, created a couple support resistance levels like in the in the low 60s. And, you know, despite how bad this recent jump up drop off has been it is you know bullish that we have held these levels because you know basically there's a big gap in the volume otherwise known as a low volume node that would separate the price action from 60,000 from you know the low 50,000 right so that's why bitcoin went so fast between you know the 50,000 level straight to 60,000 because there was no volume there so if we lose 60,000 you know bitcoin would likely run straight through 50 again into um, you know the, the high 40s or even very low 50s so uh, and obviously consequently that would be terrible scenario for the altcoins and the meme coin market as well it's all relevant so uh you know i i am happy to see that this bit of recovery here uh I, i'm obviously bullish on it i i personally have not put in a, a trade today or anything but i have been keeping my eye on it and uh and i'm glad to see that we just didn't just get completely plummeted because, you know, we already have seen how bad the altcoins, you know, kind of got hit from just that fall we had. And let's be honest, Rodney, like that fall we had from, you know, 72 to, uh, you know, low, the low 60s, you know, in about nine days, Bitcoin fell 17%. I mean, that the hit of that into the altcoins has really, really, really tough for a lot of the altcoin traders. But how have you been holding up, man? Yeah, man, that's been crazy. You know, we saw like an 18% dump. Uh, but what was crazy, AJ, about that dump is I was looking at the last halvings, and it looks like it's kind of on the pace with what happens uh, during the last four-year cycle. So, you know, although it's been pretty red, it's kind of exciting knowing that, hey, we're following um, the same path. Now, what's interesting about this run, AJ, and like totally obvious, everyone knows about this, is how successful the ETFs have become. I mean, I was watching... Um, Mr. Larry Fink, you know, talking on, I forgot which news network it was, uh, just talking about how popular these spot Bitcoin ETFs have been uh, and, and how important that is for cryptocurrency and mass adoption. Um, what do you think about that, man? That's been absolutely crazy. It's something that, uh, you know, obviously is part of this whole Bitcoin run that we've been having, but I don't think it's really talked about enough when, uh, you know, we talk about like the future of what, you know, could happen in the overall cryptocurrency market. I mean, for sure. I mean, we've obviously have seen the direct result of what happens when institutional money can, you know, legitimately get involved in crypto. Uh, if you just look at the Bitcoin chart from, you know, the beginning of 2024 until, uh, you know, the middle of March, the end of March, uh, you know, that that's a direct result of, of the ETFs. And, you know, now that Wall Street, Wall Street has always been kind of on the sideline a little bit, but now, you know, they're certainly locked in the game in a fashion that they haven't been in the game before and now you know you know even like with hong kong catching on as well uh you know i feel like a lot a lot you know, globally this is going to catch on fire and it, and it really already has so you know i i feel a couple things have happened as a result of this one the overall floor of crypto has has essentially risen um you know i, I feel like you know even with the altcoins like a lot of the levels that the altcoins fell to were are the same levels that they struggled to get above before i, I feel like that that type of support resistance is going to be held in a way that hasn't been held before because the floor of crypto is ultimately much higher. Also, I feel that 
uh, you know, in the past bull runs we have, like, was there institutional money? Yes, but not institutional money like this, not like this real ETF institutional money. So I, I, there is, you know, has been theories kind of thrown around that, you know, the, that the crypto bull run will be, uh, will, will be shorter. And I kind of always stretch the back of my head when people say that it's shorter because one, when has Wall Street ever been known to play the short game? When have they ever been, you know, the first ones to jump in and jump out? Absolutely not. I mean, Wall Street is trying to, uh, you know, Wall Street's going to get out when retail is actually excited. And if you think retail is excited, you're not in crypto because this isn't it. This isn't even close to the bull run. I feel like uh, I'm sticking to the playbook, you know, the halvings, what, tomorrow, the next day, this week, right? Uh, you know, a year and a half after the halving has traditionally been the top of the bull run and will it be different probably will it will the unexpected be the most likely outcome probably but i i'm in the school of thinking that if if it's not exactly on time like it has been the bull run might even take longer because wall street isn't here to play the short game yeah 100 percent agree aj um and, and here's the thing i mean this is something that everybody noticed is that you know bitcoin smashed through all-time highs right seventy three thousand dollars we see uh, you know meme coins doing some insane things uh, and i think this year especially uh, a little different with meme coins because we see people coming out and actually supporting meme coins and getting behind them because they understand the value that they can bring to the network uh we've seen it most with avalanche i mean they're offering incentives for meme coins uh that reach uh, that meet a certain criteria so i think the landscape is changing but what's uh, you know, kind of like a glaring, uh, you know, a fact of what's been going on in this whole bull run, uh, the beginning of the bull run, is that we haven't even hit the all-time high of the overall cryptocurrency market cap, which shows, yeah, Bitcoin sending, yeah, meme coins are sending, but we still haven't had that crazy altcoin run that we're expecting. So a lot of exciting things. Uh, I know you're, you know, big on VeChain, HBAR, so that has to be exciting for you guys. I mean, 1,000%. I mean, even if you go back and look at, like, the run-up of even Cardano, right, like, back from 2021, like, we saw, like, you know, from January to March of 2021, we've seen, we saw this insane injection of billions and billions of dollars into altcoins where, uh, you know, Cardano, I believe, went from $6 billion to the start of the year to the $32, $33 billion by March, you know, you know, not that many weeks it, it took for it to go to six to 30 billion. Uh, even projects like Algorand went from like half a billion to six billion. And we have not even, we haven't even seen that type of injection. Have all coins run up? Yes. Have mean coins run up? Yes. But I, I really think this is just a precursor. I think we're still at the pregame party. I, th I still like, we're still, we're still sitting on the tailgates. We're still playing, um, <clears throat> you know, beer pong in the parking lot. We have not gone into the game yet. Uh, though I feel like the party is just getting started, but Rodney, I do want to uh, spread some love out to the speakers here. But, you know, before we do that, I, I want to pick your brain, man. I've been seeing your content coming out, dude. You've been working your ass off. There's no secret about that. I I, I really respect your grind. I really do. Man, tell me, like, you, you have your finger on the on the pulse of meme coins much more than I do. You give, give me some, give me, give me the drop here, man. What have you been looking at? Absolutely, man. I've been looking at a few. I'll start with, uh, you know, some low caps out there. Um, here's what I'm looking for, AJ. I'm looking for pioneers of different networks, right? Because what this bull run has showed us, like the beginning of the bull run has showed us, is that even though ETH, Ethereum is the dominant kind of blockchain where people create meme coins, right? That was the whole thing last year. Even though we had taxes on meme coins, or last bull run, even though, you know, Ethereum is expensive, even when it's super congested, people still choose Ethereum to buy meme coins. They don't care, right? But what Bonk and Solana have showed us is that, hey, there are other options out there, um, and those meme coins are becoming popular, right? We have Bonk, we have Whiff, they're top 10 meme coins, they haven't got out of the top 10 since their existence, really. Um, but we have seen a little bit of issue with Solana, right? Congestion, network congestion issues and some outages. Now, I think that they'll improve on, uh, you know, uh, on, on the blockchain, but for right now, we solve those problems. Well, we just so happen to have the number one exchange in the United States, a publicly traded company, right? Uh, nothing is secret with Coinbase. Um, they just, you know, introduced their layer two not too long ago. It, it's been out for a while, but the mean coins on base, the base chain, have been going absolutely insane. And let me tell you something. When you have the Coinbase app, right, the, the wallet in your phone, it tells you like, hey, Brett on base is, you know, being traded this many times today. So that kind of advertisement is going to make base chain meme coins go absolutely insane. So I'm all over the base chain right now. I think, you know, if you use the base chain, it's fast, it's quick. Now, who knows how fast and quick it'll be once, you know, it becomes more popular. But I'm looking at base, uh, you know, especially Brett on base really closely. I've bought, I've bought a bunch of it. 
And just so you guys know, none of this is financial advice. We're just guys in the internet talking about our favorite cryptocurrencies, right? Talking about what's going on in the cryptocurrency world. Obviously, invest with caution because cryptocurrency is risky, right? Um, but I'm definitely looking at the base chain. Now, I'm looking at Avalanche. I'm looking at uh, small cap meme coins like Big Red, TD. That's a very good one. Because the Avalanche Foundation has been so open to, you know, uh, community tokens that meet certain criteria. Um, even like the Matic devs are changing their profile pictures, you know, in support of some meme coins that are popular on the network. So looking for pioneers on different blockchains, I think that Solana has, uh, you know, so many. Um, you know, there's a new Solana meme coin being created, you know, like five every minute or so. Um, so I'm looking for other networks, most notably, you know, Avalanche and Base Chain. I think it's, they're going to go absolutely crazy. But don't forget about the big dogs, SHIB, Doge, uh, Pepe. You know, all those big cryptocurrencies are going to do some big things um, during the bull run. They have shown to move with Bitcoin. They dump with Bitcoin. They pump with Bitcoin. They trade sideways with Bitcoin. So I'm looking at those ones. Uh, so th those are my uh, picks right now, uh, AJ. But I think we should get to some speakers. And yeah, 100 percent. I, I'm with you on the base chain. I got in on some Arrow a couple weeks ago, and that one has been an absolute killer um, coming from coming from the base chain as well. So um, yeah, shout out to that project. Uh, you know, I I see a Nick Hellman here in his bio. It says crypto trader and miner. So Nick, I, I want to ask you. It's you know with your mining there. I mean, with, with the having coming up, like how do, how does this change your game plan? How are you are you changing anything around with the having? Is that does that play a role in like in your day to day operations? Like, so tell me about that because I feel like from the perspective of someone who actually mines crypto, a lot of people like you know myself. I don't mind crypto, and I've been in the game for years and years and years. So as like we're days away from the having, how is this affecting your day to day? Yeah, what's going on, guys? Yeah, I mean, we all know that the mining difficulties and is continuing to rise near all time highs, and we also know that the happening is coming into effect. I mean, I think you're also seeing this reflected on the. Crypto miner, Bitcoin mining companies on the publicly traded markets, they're really uh, washed out and undervalued compared to the likes of like a MicroStrategy and a, and a Coinbase, for example. So I think um, there's going to be a lot of pressure on Bitcoin miners, and we're, and we're seeing that in day-to-day -day and what you can do for profits and revenue. I think what could be the savior for miners um, and individual node runners and these crypto mining stocks is the utilization of BRC20s, ordinals, and potentially runes being the first scaling solution for the Bitcoin network. Um, that's really what we're going to need to need to see, and really that vision of Bitcoin not being sustained by their mining rewards anymore, having after having, but being sustained by the actual on-chain transactions and, and scaling solutions for Bitcoin. So hopefully we're trending in that direction. I know runes is coming soon. I already see some NFT collections and things, you know, trying to launch with the runes network. And we have seen a little bit of an ordinal hype and the BRC20 hype. Um, so that, that's kind of the progress. Uh, not easy to be a miner when difficulty rate is rising. Uh, price is having dips. And, uh, you know, we're really relying on transactions to fuel the profitability there. Yeah, Nick, so I, I want to stay on that for a little bit. I mean, um, you know, I, I have a friend back home. Uh, he did make me sign an NDA, so I can't say his name. But he, you know, he is, let's just put it this way. His his electricity bill is uh, almost a million dollars a month. <laughs> okay, so he, he has uh, quite quite the operation going in, uh, going in Maryland. And, uh, and, you know, he, we had a long talk about this. And, you know, he said a lot of the same things, like in terms of, the transactions on the Bitcoin network is what's going to keep it alive. But in the back of his mind, he's actually trying to find alternatives, you know, outside of the Bitcoin, outside of the Bitcoin network. What have, uh, if not yourself, what have other miners been looking at if they're going to move away from Bitcoin? What have they been looking at? Well, I think, like we said, the, it'll be interesting to see what goes on with this first real scaling solution of Bitcoin using the same UTXO pattern with runes to see if that's an option there. Um, so we'll, we'll just monitor the progress and see there for now the Bitcoin is still profitable and the ordinals and everything make, made profitability. But yeah, you're going to have to look to pivot and look at other opportunities and we'll see what happens with some of these new scaling solutions. Uh, nice, Nick, man. Mining's always been one of those things that's super confusing to me. I've have I have a few friends who have these crazy, insane rigs set up, and like they kind of bite the bullet when uh, you know the market's pumping because it's not that profitable to mine. But I can imagine if you're thugging it out during the bear market, you can come up with some crazy profits. 
Yeah, and then also, you know, like what you're referring to is probably your friends have GPU rigs. So GPU mining, obviously, that's how Bitcoin mining started. You can't do that anymore. You really can't even use GPUs for Ethereum anymore. I used to do GPU mining of Ethereum back in even 2016. Obviously, now Ethereum is proof of stake. So uh, looking at all coins to do GPU mining, that's another opportunity there uh, where you kind of bite the bullet on profitability to, uh, when you're mining it. But if you see the upside from these bear market prices, 10x, 100x, 50x on some of these new altcoins that are GPU mineable, that's where you can find opportunity. Uh, yeah, but for the average Joe, it's much, much easier to try to get into the meme coin uh, sector or some of these uh, just go buy it on the open market, open exchange, um, rather than trying to be a miner themselves. But, you know, GPU miners and, and Bitcoin miners is really what's helped to surge in AMD and NVIDIA stocks, just as far as GPU shortages, uh, trip shortages, along with the AI hype. So there is something to it. We do need miners to for this most sacred network, which is Bitcoin. And it'll be interesting, and hopefully the transactions uh, keep the appetite and the miners online. But again, if miners need to go online due to lack of profitability, uh, we will get that uh, readjustment in the hash rate, and we, the, the network will survive and live on. Awesome, Nick. Appreciate you, brother. Learned a lot. Uh, next, we'll move to Maddie. All in, Maddie. I see that you have a bunch of hex stuff uh, in your uh, banner right there. Now, as a meme coin person, I'm interested in all like networks and blockchains uh, that uh, make trading faster, easier, more decentralized. I know as a hex guy, you're probably all into that. Uh, wh what do you think the uh, pulse chain uh, is gonna? You know, wh what do you think it's gonna place in the overall uh, grand scheme when it comes to uh, different networks to trade on meme coins and stuff like that? Well, Richard Hart is the genius billionaire, and uh, you know he called the bottom and the top. You guys have heard all that. I think Pulse Chain really has the community and the tech to go really far, even in the second half of this bull run. So I'm really excited about it. There's a uh, there's a meme only Dex that was created by a community member called Hexy Bastard. It's uh, it's called Nine Inch .io. You might have heard of one inch so yeah there's lots of really cool things happening on pulse chain and stay tuned for the pulse chain conference coming up uh next month awesome brother yeah i have heard of nine inch i like the the humor you guys got over there um uh, so you have any like big projects over there like what's really going on on the uh, pulse chain well there's rumors that there's going to be a really cool privacy solution that hasn't been implemented before. I've been in crypto for 8 years and uh in the early days, you know, we had Mimble Wimble coin trying to do something. Um so that's really cool. I think that um you know, just really the biggest thing that Pulse Chain has going for it right now is that there's this community of people who have time locked in hex and so they've stuck around even through huge dips. And that's really going to bounce back to the upside uh, in the end for the for the entire network. Um, we we set the world record for the most YouTubers live at the Hex conference in January. Uh, we had 240 people on screen at the same time. So there, there's there, there's something building here. It's just uh, you know it's it's uh, it's yet to play out. No, well, I was, go ahead, Robin. Oh, so real quick, uh, now this is on topic. So Gary Gensler, Gary Bear, Gary Gensler, kind of trolled us all, AJ. I know you saw that. Uh, maybe thought we thought he was going to step down. Real quick, thoughts on the whole, you know, Richard Hart, uh, Gary Gensler, SEC drama, and then we'll move over to the next speaker. Well, Richard's case is going to set the precedent for Uniswap, who got their Wells notice uh, just a week ago. Um, the key date to look forward to, hundreds of Hex and Pulse Chain people going to New York City on October 24th to stand up for real DeFi. And uh, we would welcome anybody to join us at the meetup there. Uh, PulseChainTour.com is organizing it. And uh, it, yeah, it's gonna be something really special for all of crypto to defend this idea that just because you have software, that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, the SEC, they can't sue software, but they're trying to. They're trying to sue uh, a smart contract uh, in the Hex case. And so we're not gonna let them do that. And, you know, funny thing, what the first thing my brain kind of goes to with the whole, um, you know, Gary, SEC going after Richard is, is, you know, the XRP case. Because we all are well aware of the fact that, 
you know, if if XRP, if that case went the way the SEC wanted it to, they would have used the XRP as precedent to go after everyone else, right? Basically, like, well, if well, since you know we won this case, then we can go after this coin and this coin and this coin and this coin. What I am fearful of is that, say, in in a parallel universe where X amount of years from now, where the SEC does get their way with with Richard or whatever, would they be able to use that as precedent and go after uh, I don't know Sonny Lou, Silvio McCalley, Vitalik? Like, well, like, well, like, you know, you see my point here, Rodney? Like, are they going to try to use that to go after everyone else similar to what they to their playbook with XRP, or or am I just pulling for straws here? Yeah, it's kind of crazy because what you see, AJ, here's the thing about Uniswap, right? It, you, you just fork it, right? There, we have a ton of decentralized exchanges. Uniswap is just the big daddy. Everybody uses them. You know, you talked about Aerodrome earlier. I like them, but I like trading base meme coins on, on Uniswap. So I think what they're doing, AJ, is that they're going after the big daddies to kind of be like, hey, we're going after the top dogs so everyone else isn't safe. But I think, you know, the, the only way they can absolutely, you know, uh, you know, terminate all decentralized exchanges in the United States is if they ban it completely, which would completely push innovation out of the United States. So, you know, to me, them going after Uniswap, you know, it's like it's a decentralized exchange. You know, anybody does what they want, every man for themselves kind of deal. So to me, it's just, uh, you know, just to kind of uh, to establish some sort of show of force. Right. I think it's a, a pointless lawsuit. And I think they're, they're going to end up losing at the end of it. I mean, the, I, the whole case for jurisdiction that the SEC has over Hex is that the Uniswap developers live in New York, and that's why they can sue somebody who made a copy of Uniswap. And so uh, the good news is Richard has the same lawyers that Elon used when the SEC overreached on him. So, uh, you know, I think, uh, I think it's looking good, but we certainly do need uh, everybody, you know, so that clear. Yeah, for sure. And you know, one thing I I I, I do want to give a shout out to is Crypto Wendy O. She said something uh, l late last week that that really really hit me. Like you know how you know Gary was the deciding vote on the ETF for of the five votes. You know he was the third or whatever. And so of course they're going to like the SEC is going to let us have what they can control. And if you kind of think about like the implications of the BlackRock ETF. Uh, I'm, excuse me, of, of the Bitcoin ETF, not BlackRock, the Bitcoin ETF is that like that would be people, you know, they they would have the custody. It's not like you own the Bitcoin like like physically like we would in normal crypto. And the reason that they're like going <clears throat> that they'll give us a Bitcoin ETF, but then go after decentralized exchanges because that's, you know, that that's how we own crypto. So like her connection there was basically that we're trying to that they're trying to make it in a way so we can't own anything like just like how the similar things happening with property like it's really hard for people under 30 years old to you know own their own house or whatever and now they're some, trying to do the same thing with crypto and I, I that was just a really smart connection that she made there and i wanted to point that out and give her credit for it so um i do want to pass it over to uh roaring kitty uh roaring kitty what, what's your take on um you know everything we've been talking about so far today um especially in terms of you know um the sec going after richard and things like that well yeah I, what's my take on on the sec i think they're complete hacks um i got my start on basically on chicago's wall street in 1997 when i was 17 years old and well, that, i guess huh I'm sorry? Let him cook, everybody. Go ahead, Roaring Kitty. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, I mean, I have very strong opinions about Gary Gensler because I think he is acting um, uh, very inauthentically. Uh, what I mean is um, he was brought in by the Joe Biden administration. Joe Biden, we know, isn't calling any shots. And so we've seen him kind of strategically take apart the crypto industry from the bear market from 2022 when there was no momentum. Right. And, um, he's working with Liz Warren. I see like they're doing whisper talking to each other and I'm from America. I don't live there. I actually live in Asia. It's four in the morning here, but I had to be on here because I have to support my boys at Reddit, uh, which I've been a part of since day zero, day negative one. So when, when I'm looking at Gary, I'm saying, how much time does this guy have left? And the answer to that is it depends on the election. And I'm expecting him to be removed of his job probably before the end of 2024. You know, he came out with his own 
he came out with his own Wells notice about a day ago, and he said, uh, it's an honor to uh, have done this, 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 and this. And Cameron Rink Winkleboss immediately retweeted and replied to him something, you know, something negative, whatever. But it's apparent to me that he's done the job that he's been brought in to do. And that job is to stop crypto at all costs. Because uh, you look back at, at his MIT days, he was a crypto proponent. So it's really um, people acting um, inauthentically, uh, nefariously, uh, 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 being paid to, I mean, maybe not directly, but being like put in this position to say, hey, Gary, if you sync this, um, better things await you in 2020, uh, next election, 2024, 2026, whatever. He's always a guy that's pivoting to get a place, to get a step up. Like he was uh, with Hillary Clinton. He was the CFO of the Hillary Clinton Foundation in 2016. So you can trace him back to his very, very weird and, you know, just nefarious uh, actions towards what the part, what the people that are paying him to do, that's what he's going to do. So that's my thought on that. And I'll get... A little. I'll elaborate on that a little bit more a little bit later. Uh, great point, uh, Roaring Kitty. You know, you know what's funny about that is that I mean, isn't this guy here to to prevent t catastrophes? I mean, we're going after XRP, we're going after Binance, we're going after Coinbase. Now we're going after you know Uniswap, which are all you know good projects that haven't wrecked. What happened to Terra Luna? What happened to you, you know your boy Sam Bankman Free that you have ties to? You know, talk about you know not taking uh, not being proactive, right? Just going after good projects. So it's kind of wonky. And, you know, this election is important. It's it, it's it's about voting for someone who's actually open to the cryptocurrency space, you know, becoming bigger, not to someone who's, you know, completely against it. So uh, great uh, point, Roaring Kitty. Um, yeah. do, you, do you have any more yeah. points? Yeah, and they have, um, what's that girl's name in, in, in the SEC? So Gary is the SEC chairman, but there's other chair people that are, that are ranking right below him. And there's their peers. Yeah, Hester Pierce. Yes, so yeah. that's the person that could... We're, I'm not on a team here. I'm not Team Hester or Team Republican or Team Democrat. I'm just Team Transparency. And that's what got me out of America. That's why I left is because I felt it wasn't um, organic and transparent anymore. So I think that she could bring the gavel to the SEC that says, okay, this is fair or this is not fair. And this is, you know, and have a vote within the SEC because... I just don't feel that, and I have felt for the last three years since Gary's been in power, that it's just all a stage, it's all a setup, it's all a movie from Hollywood, and they're just reenacting that with real people's money on the line, which is what CFI does, which is what Wall Street does, which is where Gary came from at Goldman Sachs. So, you know, I know this story all too well. I've been in this game for so fucking long that I can, I can see... A fo I, I could see a fox in the henhouse, just like how he is. So yeah, yeah. I feel like you completely knocked it completely out of the park. And shout, and shout out to Hester Pierce. You know, she has you know vocally, um, you know, gone against Gary on on so many things. And I and I feel like it, you know, if anyone, it, it's super clear now. Just like it is like I, I completely feel you when you say like I don't care about it being like Republican or Democrat. I'm just for transparency like I, I'm completely with you on that. But when it comes to this next election, like not to make it political, but I'm strictly one issue voting on on and that issue is crypto. I don't care if it's Trump. I don't care if it's RFK. I don't. I don't care. I just don't. I just want there to be because, like, because, like, it was the same thing that happened with the internet. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there was a lot of like people that that wanted that was very vocal about like the internet, how it's only used for bad things and blah blah blah. But then, like, we kind of realized, hey, like, it's a tool, and you know, you can use a hammer to build a house, or you can use a hammer to cave someone's skull in. But a hammer is still a hammer, and 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 and, it, and it, like, and that's really what it comes down to with the internet, and that really what it comes down to down to to crypto. It's not necessarily like the thing itself that's inherently good or bad it's how people use them and the intent of people and ultimately i feel like you know we've seen the evolution of so many things become digital and for that to happen to money and to happen in this way i mean i i just really hope that you know crypto exists the way it does now and in you know five to ten years and i'm right with you there on, with on that roaring kitty like i i i think about you know like what what it would take for me to leave america all the time like you know i have to not to even get into that conversation but you know that that had that crosses my mind too much 
and um, you know, applause to you for doing the right thing there. I think we need to lighten the mood up here a little bit. We got my guy Blockchain Buds in the house, who's a growth hacker and an amateur comedian. Block, you know, I I, 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 I I think I have to ask you for a joke on the spot. I know you never ask a comedian to tell a joke, but we need to lighten the mood. We've got to stop talking about uh, leaving America and Joe Biden. We, we need we need some we need some funny in the house. And, and you know, you, you did put it in your bio. You did put it in your bio. What's going on, Block? How you doing, bro? How do you know that people uh, need to lighten the mood? They will tell you. They will tell you on the spot, do a joke, be funny. That's not how, that's not how comedy works. I'm not, I'm sorry. I got I sorry to be the bearer of bad news. That is not how comedy works. People cannot just, uh, turn it on and turn it off like a faucet, uh, hot this time, cold next time. No, it doesn't work like that. I'm sorry. I apologize for letting you down. Uh, cause that's apparently all I'm good for at the moment. Just letting people down, letting people down. Uh, we're just going to keep, uh, you know, it's a downer. It is downer. Uh, to be real with you though, uh, I'm thinking about leaving America also. I'm thinking about leaving America also. Uh, it seems like one of those things where, uh, in all seriousness, like this is all seriousness. I think about it too much too. Like you said, you think about it way too much. I think a lot of Americans do think about that kind of stuff uh, just because it's like, yo, uh, conspiracy theories are conspiracies until like, what, five, ten years later, and then you realize, oh, shit, there was a whole document on this that, that's going to get, uh, you know, going to be declassified in, in a couple months. Like, holy crap, this was this was true. Like, all the conspiracy theorists were right, you know? So, um, and that happens with so many conspiracies. Um, I think you know, there was like a, a, a Who Killed Kennedy docu or a document that, that got declassified recently. Like, there's a bunch of stuff. So, I'm looking forward to um, the Gensler stuff coming out. Not tomorrow, not next year, uh, maybe like 30 years from now, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, because uh, we, we do know he was like friends with or his father or whoever were they were they're all in, in the same bed together it's like damn dude you're you're absolutely right why why do we have to deal with um you know them going after like all these different dude, they went after q coin of all people like they're going after like ridiculous exchanges when they they didn't like yo sam bankman fried was literally up there talking about how other ex other uh, exchanges were what do you say i think the word he used were, was insolvent and then guess what <laughs> guess what Guess what? You know, what three? What six months later? Was it six months later? Like, uh, then the FTX crash happens, and then we realize, like, yo, it's insolvent. Um, and yo, we would never have known that if it weren't for um, if it weren't for CZ calling in, calling in the debts, right? Um, and yo, then they go after CZ after. So it's like, dude, these guys are just—it's just like I don't even know what to say anymore. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to think. Uh, I'm, I want to leave. I want to leave too. I want to leave too. But yeah, sorry I couldn't uh, come up with a joke on the spot. Uh, actually, you know what? Knock. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do a knock knock joke. Uh, yeah, that's it. So all right, all right, blah, blah. all right. I, I I got a joke on the spot. I got a joke on the spot. Hey, Rodney, are you there? I'm here, baby. Oh, don't 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 do baby. This better be good. All right, I, I got you. Hey, Rodney, did you know? Did you know that me and Bitboy that we have matching tattoos? Did you know that? And I think that's the difference between us, Rodney, because you have laser eyes and I have laser removal. I hate you. I Boom! I'll Boom! Boom! See, I'm that good. I'm that good. And Ben's my best friend. Shout out to him. Boo this man! <laughs> Boo this man! Oh, uh, that's, that's funny, AJ. I mean, that's funny. It's corny, but it's funny, you know what I mean? All right, well, uh, with that being said, I think it's time to go ahead and get to uh, Reddit. Now, here's the thing. Uh, you know, censorship is a big thing in this space, AJ, and you know, not, not in cryptocurrency, I mean, but even uh, on something called Reddit, the actual, you know, website, right? I use Reddit a lot. I'm an OG kind of internet person. Reddit is, you know, before cryptocurrency, you know, uh, just like, you know, Pepe and the 4chan memes and those sorts of things. It has a kind of deep meaning in the meme space, and I think that, you know, meme coins and projects with that kind of deep meaning that everyone recognizes can really do some big things in the space. So, um, we're here to fight against uh, censorship, and it looks like Reddit is doing that. Reddit, What's going on? Tell us about your project. Yeah, well, I'll, uh, I'll just start us off. Um, Roaring Kitty here. And thank you, guys. You guys are doing an excellent job. It's my first time listening to Rodney and AJ, but I will be back for sure. Um, I was introduced to Reddit uh, probably a month before launch by the founder. And I thought it was an extraordinary idea just because of my background, where I come from, and how I know the CFI industry. So I got involved in... And we've grown our community organically, and now I hear a lot of uh, community members saying, 
well, talk about, you know, go on, go on, go on the, the spaces and talk about Reddit flip, flipping the stock. I'm like, okay, we're, we're going to talk about that, right? But I really want to give a, a little bit of a background on why Reddit and why now, why today, and why people should be joining this movement. So to answer that, why Reddit, why now, I'd like to go back. I'd like to take one minute or two minutes to go back to 1999. In 1999, in a short story, Bank Central Finance put out a multi-billion dollar marketing roadshow to sell these dot-coms tech stocks to the market. At that time, stocks can move 100, 200% a day, just like memes today. So the allure and the, volati uh, the, the volatility sure caught uh, USA's Main Street, you know. So the, the allure was there. Everybody was looking. This is the new normal, CNBC said. And what Main Street failed to realize or was naive to was that none of these tech stocks actually did anything. Uh, 99 out of 100 of them, including Amazon, did not earn profit yet, not $1. So the long story short, by 2001, the tech bubble that Wall Street propped up emphatically burst and all of retail was wrecked. And we're not talking about wrecked for a crypto cycle of one to two years. We're talking about 15 years wrecked. People lost everything. So what did the Wall Street do from 2001? They were wrecked too because everything deflated. From 2001 to 2004, the CFI Wall Street deal makers were struggling to survive. Luckily, luckily for them, they dreamt up yet another bright idea that to improve their revenue from their business that's sinking, they could work with these mortgage brokers to flood the market with mortgages. Many of them were like poor quality or even fraudulent. They took these mortgages, and I think you know where I'm going here, packaged them up and sold them right back to Main Street in the form of AAA-rated securities. Now, where's Gary Gensler there, right? I mean, uh, uh, where's the police, right? And this is the with Michael Burry. This is the movie he starred in, The Big Short. So those mortgage securities, those debt securities, they were dog shit. They were like shit coins, just like the tech IPOs were. So another long story short, CFI took all the Main Street money again in the form of savings and demand deposits. You know, we give CFI our money. That's called demand deposits and savings. And they take it and they gamble it away. They gambled it away and they sunk the world in derivatives. So long story short, summer, summing this up, the Fed, the Fed bailed them all out so they can keep the scam going. And what did they do? Well, this gets us to Reddit. Um, this... The IPO, in my opinion, the Reddit stock, is at the beginning of the bank's next tech scam. And I say that because Reddit has zero earnings. You have to prove yourself in, in stocks. You have, to, you have to show earnings to be valued at $12 billion. That's what their IPO is. I think they're at seven now. But they hit $12 billion on the first day. So just recently, I posted an article on my, on my Twitter. It's in, the, um, it's in, the, it's in, it's in the, the front area, whatever it is. Um, well, it said that the, the banks posted their best quarter of IPO profit in years. This means they're going to use Reddit and Reddit-like type IPO performances to shovel more dog shit to us, to the Americans, right? Because this is this Reddit, this stock, NYSE, NASDAQ, that's America only. So this is why we created Reddit. We wanted to see centralized Reddit. We want to flip them. You know, so in my crystal ball, in the future, what will happen? Well, history will rhyme. I believe the banks are going to prepare for another IPO season in 2024, 2025. And this time, the retailers are going to be on to their scam and they won't get their liquidity. Who will get the liquidity? We think it's us. And we don't have just the USA. We have the USA. We have Mexico. We have Europe. We have Africa. We have Asia, China, Japan. Southeast Asia, Australia, we have all the continents capable of coming on board with us in our community and doing something really effing special. And that is flipping uh, the Reddit. We think Reddit's going to come down in value uh, because it has no value. And we are only going to go up. We're in month one, one and a half. And we're already starting to get those wheels turning. So that's where we came from. This is where we are. And that's where we're going. And um, I, I also want to say that we are, we are all CEOs. All of the community members are CEOs. You don't see us dumping our stock on retail investors because that's exactly what Reddit is doing today and yesterday and the day before. 
So lots of bad tasting stuff, lots of nefarious actions. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. I'm going to get Patty up here too. He's a really fantastic influencer, controls the voice of the crowd really well. So I just wanted to lay, be the precipice of all conversations here so that we can go forward with the same understanding. Um, thank you for your time. And you guys are doing a great job. I really enjoy this space. Yeah, of course, man. Thank you. And, and, and well done. I mean, I, it certainly sounds like you have quite, you know, an ambitious, uh, you know, roadmap ahead of you here. And, you know, you know, what the first thing I always kind of go to with projects like this is I, I want to know about like, you know, who, who are your partners? Who, who is backing this? Like, how, like, I like, you know, you coming on here and saying that you're going to flip the actual Reddit stock. I mean, I mean, that's, that's a very bold statement. And, um, you know, not that I want to, um, like say like I got you or anything like that, but you know that is a bold statement. So I, I do want to know like you know like who who's backing you and 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 you know how how long do you think it's going to take you to do that? And it's very ambitious. So I respect it. Um, Krasik can talk more about that. He's the M and A guy uh, or uh, some or, or, or Reddit uh, the speaker. So I'm going to let them take over a little bit. Sure, sure, and, go ahead. Uh, it's four it's four in the morning here, but I will be available for other. Um, finance uh, sp and, and C5 specific questions a little bit later. Totally. Go ahead, Krasik. Yeah, so as far as Reddit the stock and Reddit the company, you know, the whole establishment of what, you know, the embodiment of what Reddit was, was a community-driven forum. This is what made Reddit great was the community itself and the board of directors and the individuals that were actually running the company lost sight of that and i don't think they have the community's best interest in mind anymore and it's pretty evident in numerous things one being they sold all the data to google they, you know they sold data to google to help build their ai by help build their ai algorithm that was the first thing so they took the community's uh, efforts the community building the community itself and sold the data to google to help them build so that's the first payout second payout 193 million dollars back in 2023 went to the ceo as a pay package that's the second red flag third red flag they decided to go ipo and actually get listed on the new york stock exchange when they got listed on the new york stock exchange uh they went with their public offering to try to suck as much as they can, came up with an $8 billion evaluation. Initially, it was supposed to be $10 billion evaluation. Then it settled around $7 or $8 billion evaluation. Within the first 48 hours, I would say 90% of the board dumped their stock. Dumped it. Absolutely dumped it. Got rid of it. In, in its entirety. So, you know, a lot of the trade volume that you saw on the first day of that IPO launch and, um, you know, coming off of that, that initial public offering and actually going live for public trading you saw on the first day that first day was only about five hours of market trading and that five hours of market trading they saw maybe 50 million dollars in volume trading volume and based off of an eight billion dollar market cap range that is ass it is complete trash in comparison to what they are supposed to be and their quote-unquote evaluation of eight billion dollars but only having 50 million dollars in trade volume on that day within that 24-hour period our cryptocurrency the reddit cryptocurrency was at a seven seven million dollar market cap and we had 1.2 million dollars in trade volume so that's a six to one in trade volume versus their 600 to one trade volume we flipped them already in trading volume on that first initial day the second the second day the second day they dropped from 52 million dollars in trading volume down to 15 that was a friday a lot of the exits were done within the first five hours of open trading to the public which was right after the ipo so you're seeing that these guys do not have the community in the best interest they don't they don't care about reddit anymore they're using it as their exit they're using it as um their little payday their cash out they don't have the vision they don't have the passion behind it anymore to help push the form and the community and the project the platform in a good direction to turn it into something that is actually good for the everyday investor the everyday investor got screwed in this situation and uh you know a lot of people 
thought it was evident. I mean, it, it was it was all over the news. When they tried to do their PR pieces, we came in hot and heavy, and we got in before them. So we, we ran, like, what, 500 PR pieces on multiple different platforms, Google, Yahoo Finance, uh, CNBC, all, CNN, all these different platforms that they were going to run their campaigns on. We got in before them a week or two beforehand. We controlled that narrative because we are the decentralized version of Reddit. The decentralized version of Reddit is the community. The community is what made Reddit so freaking great. So we came in as the DeFi, the decentralized version of Reddit, and tried to bring the community together. We are still working on bringing the community together and becoming that decentralized version platform of what Reddit was and what made Reddit so great before all of these corporate hags and all these uh, all these greedy individuals decided to start putting their hands into it. So when you got these hedge fund companies, these these asset holding companies, these trading companies, all these individuals that have multi millions of dollars that like to manipulate markets, that like to capture liquidity, they like to to scam and screw over the everyday investor, the ninety nine percent. This narrative, this project, this decentralized version of Reddit is to prove that the 99% is stronger than them. Collectively, we are stronger than them. And it is very evident that we can get over on them. Um, just like GameStop. GameStop was a perfect freaking example. Wall Street Bets got people and individuals together on Reddit itself to collectively come together and actually buy up the entire freaking float. Not Maybe not the entire float, but they bought up the majority of the float while these hedge fund companies, about 11 different hedge funds companies, were trying to short the shit out of GameStop. GameStop was flying down. They came in. They bought up the float. They ran it up to you know hundreds of dollars per share. And then these hedge funds companies started panicking. They were getting liquidated. They were going to lose out. They were going to miss a chance on buying back their their shares and returning it for what they borrowed originally and they screwed up they screwed up hard now you know wall street bets these people everybody knows everybody's seen or heard about it it was on fire it was it was all over the place everybody knew about it these are one of the individuals that are actually involved with our project he is he is partnering with this project the individual that uh, uh collectively got all these people, millions and millions and upon millions of people to buy up GameStop and hold and hold that shit for years is involved with this project because he believes in the narrative. He believes in what's going on. He believes in the corporate corruption and he is involved with this project because the narrative is so strong. We have so many strong backers in this project that it's, it's unfathomable that we are still sitting at this market cap. In my opinion, we should be at way higher valuation, but since we already flipped them in trading volume based off of their, what, six, seven, eight billion dollar valuation, and they're, they can barely scrounge up five million dollars in trade volume, and we're doing 1.2 off of a seven million dollar market cap, how are you going to sit here and say that we can't flip it? That's my opinion. I haven't been more bullish on the project since uh, pre-COVID, to be honest with you. I mean, it's been a very long time since I've seen this community sentiment, the unity, the the, the community backing, the actually, uh, you know, strong individuals and team that's backing it because I've been so used to the freaking Solana space and all these shit devs and rugs and scams and rug pulls and just um, individuals looking for a quick flip and then running LARPs or freaking memes and just you know running off with their little take and then moving on to the next one i haven't seen a strong team like this in a very long time and i feel good and lucky that i was able to get in this early uh i myself am here to stay because i believe in the narrative and it's it's pretty evident that this decentralized platform or reddit that is going on in the background and getting developed is going to be something to be reckoned with especially with the d5 web3 integration that's going to be built into it and let me let me let me add to that really quickly. Who's behind us? I think the idea was was authentic, and it was three or four guys that brought in three or four more guys. That and then we started saying, "Well, this is such a great idea. Let's self fund this." And that's kind of what we did. And it's only been uh, what four seven weeks, and we've got like like Krasik said, we've got Wall Street Bets, we got Slum Dodge Millionaire, Patty's here. You know, and he's got a, a, a very big. Um, uh, you know, near, uh, a channel himself. And um, I also just wanted to say one thing about volume. Uh, and you guys talked about volume early and Krasik talked about volume. Volume 
to everybody that's listening that doesn't really understand markets, volume is the number one thing you have to learn first. If a stock is is valued at seven billion dollars and is tra trades one to seven million dollars a day, that's not trading. Nobody's buying and selling that. That's hedge funds and sell side market makers trading with each other to put out fake volume. And they can't do more than that. They, they're they're going to do seven million a day. That's a lot of money to some people. Reddit, it were valued between six and ten million dollars. And we're doing 500K to $1.5 million a day buying and selling, volume, trading activity, new people coming in, some people taking profits. But there is that consistent volume there. And that's where you know it's not manipulated. And that's how you know there's nobody really behind us but us. Like, we're just Ethereum OGs here. You know, I've been uh, in Ethereum since 2016. So. I mean, eight years now, so yeah, like somebody else. So, yeah, we got, um, we got a strong community. We got a guy called Moonboy who's fantastic at creating memes. And, uh, no, it's, it's only getting bigger by the day. Awesome. Uh, great explanation, Roaring and, and, and Krasik. Man, you guys really gave us the whole rundown. Um, you know, and I actually read it something I saw right when it launched. You guys started posting a lot on X, and I, you know, I really like what you guys are doing. Tickers, um, fire. But one of the things we want to, we, we got to talk about here, and I want to uh, put the mic, uh, turn the mic over to Patty. Shout out to Patty. I've actually met Patty in person. Great dude, stand up guy. Um, is this the fact that Reddit used to be a place for censorship, and now we're, excuse me, of not having censorship. And really, DeFi is the only place that's offering an X, obviously, uh, a place to, you know, uh, share your thoughts and express yourself without censorship. So, Patty, what exactly is Reddit going to do uh, when it comes uh, to the, the fight against censorship? And uh, what is the, like, kind of uh, final goal of the project? Yo, what's up, Rodney? What's up, everybody? Uh, thanks for having me on. So, uh, well, the first thing I want to say is, you know, I come from a traditional background, traditional market background. I was in the stock market for many, many, many years. I actually got into the stock market in the late 90s when I was a kid. And then years later, I eventually worked at a hedge fund. I was a trader. So it's like I have an understanding of the stock market and how the stock market works. And then, you know, seven years ago, I got into crypto. So the one thing about Reddit, right? Nothing about the Reddit platform correlates to the corporate stock idea. When, okay, so, um, there, you know, I, I got into the project, you know, shortly after launch because I was specifically looking for a Reddit token for this exact reason. I remember what happened when the movie game, well, when the movie Dumb Money came out and then the GameStop token came out and went to 75 million within like five or six days. So I said to myself, Huh. I use I always talk about market psychology and using simple logic where I'm saying like, you know, two plus two is four and things make sense. So I'm saying to myself, nothing about the Reddit platform is corporate. Nothing about people on the Reddit platform talk about corporate stuff situations. It's like it's the individual, the individual collectively doing what they want as a group. So what happened when the whole situation happened with GameStop and AMC, you had Reddit, you had Wall Street bets, you had, you know, Roaring Kidder, you had like the, the situation of collectives of individuals coming together and literally taking down the man, so to speak. So what happened when that whole scenario went down with, you know, the GameStop situation? Well, you had a bunch of people that knew there was a large short position on the, on the stock. So the individuals collectively started coming together and saying, if we all buy this stock and long it, we could start to squeeze these hedge funds and screw them over. And so when the stock went from a couple bucks to five bucks to 10 bucks to 20 bucks to 50 bucks, normally in a retail situation, when you're a stock trader, you're taking profits there. But these individuals collectively came together and they said, we're going to destroy the hedge funds. And they did. So they just kept buying and the thing literally went to hundreds of dollars. So these hedge funds, what do they do? They have to get out of their position. Otherwise, they're going to lose everything. And sure enough, they started to lose everything. And then what happened after that? There was literally like a government intervention where they said, hey, what, you know, what was the platform everybody was using to buy and sell? It was Robinhood. So they literally shut down Robinhood. They moved the goalposts. 
they changed the rules to fuck the individual. So the thing that I started saying to myself was, holy crap, there's a Reddit IPO coming out. What is a Reddit IPO? An initial public offering of a stock that's going to be released. So then I started reading news articles and I'm starting to look things up. And then all of a sudden I'm seeing these articles about individuals saying, I don't like Redditors, I should say. Redditors are like, we're going to short the stock. Nothing about the Reddit platform makes any fucking sense to a corporate stock. Corporations are run by you've got the you've got the central power that dictates everything. Everything crypto is it is the individual. Think about what Bitcoin is. When Bitcoin came out, it's a peer-to-peer -peer network. It's a trustless system. The individuals collectively work together to create this whole idea of not needing a middleman. So when the IPO came out, I'm going to myself. I need to find the crypto. So I started looking for different Reddit tokens. Dozens yeah. of them popped up. Jake talked about it. Dozens of them popped up. One by one, they started disappearing. And I said to myself, if there's one Reddit token that could rise to the top, what I could see playing out is a narrative where the individuals collectively come together and say, nothing about the Reddit platform makes any sense yeah. to go with the stock. But yet, if you have a decentralized platform that's Reddit-based, it's the individual. So I'm thinking to myself, people in the crypto space, if they knew that there was a crypto token called Reddit, they would automatically associate it to what the Reddit platform stands for, which is the individuals. Mm -hmm. Right? I, you know, go, go ahead, AJ. N no, I, I was just saying, I mean, I, I completely agree with him because they would make the connection that, that that is the same thing. And, and I, uh, he hit so many points there. But I, I do want to say to everybody in the audience, I mean, how many people are in here? We've got about 2,000 people in the house right now. First of all, thank you all so much for being here. I do want to point your attention to the top the tweets there in the nest all about the, you know, RDDT, the Reddit. Uh, there's a tweet from Mario and two tweets from them. Definitely, everybody, definitely take some time to go check out those tweets in the nest and make sure you give their project a follow. It seems like they have a lot of really good stuff going on here. I do want to ask, um, you know, re I'm really briefly in like 30 seconds or less uh, to either Krasik or Roaring Kitty from the Reddit team, you know, like my question to the to projects like this, you know, like 30 seconds or less, where do you see this project in five years? Well, I'll go first, um, and Krasik will probably have a better answer than me um, because he's way more involved in the day-to-day -day than I am. Um, but we have plans to build this thing out, and there's not much I can say without crossing the lines of what the team wants out there in the public. In five years, I, I envision an ecosystem that doesn't interfere with Reddit, that doesn't copyright infringe Reddit, but that is, is the communities, the global community. Sometimes Americans think they are the globe. We are not. We want to put in a global platform that is permissionless, that is decentralized, that uses crypto payments, uses currency in a, in a very convenient and easy way to allow people to communicate and that's kind of where I will stop uh, because I, I just don't I, I've been here since day, day negative one but I'm not too involved in the day-to-day -day operations uh, so I can li li leave the Easter eggs like that but I won't I'm not gonna cross any boundaries awesome appreciate it Rory Kitty and I do before we get out of here um, real quick uh, Krasik, if you have a, you know, quick final thoughts, we're wrapping up here. I do want to pass the mic over to Fashion Coder so she can give us some uh, uh, some final thoughts as well. Go ahead, Krasik. Yeah, so the decentralized version platform of Reddit, this is going to be community ran, community owned, community moderators. This is going to be built into the DeFi Web3 network, so you're going to be able to integrate your NFTs, build your profile, build your influence actually have yourself a voice and a pl platform to actually exercise your free speech and uh, not be censored as as much as the regular Reddit platform and have all the corporate individuals impeding on your free speech. We also are going to be having RevShare built into the platform and uh, working in the tokenomics of the actual project itself within the platform and then 
the rev share back to the community holders and the individuals holding the token and inside the project is going to be paid back, you know, tenfold in the future as long as everybody comes together like uh, what community driven projects are, are supposed to do and what they do do and what uh, Reddit used to be was a community ran project. So this is exactly the vision and the goal of bringing back the community and uh, showing that the 99% is stronger than the one. Love that classic fashion. You got any closing thoughts for us? Yes. So it, with meme coins, just in general, I think that they actually have a lot of utility, even though the project probably doesn't have any utility. But the utility that they have for just our society in general is they're the hook. They're the theme and they are the team that people can pick. And I've seen that in my own life, like as on dating apps, you know, sometimes something will happen and um, I'll be talking about crypto with someone on a dating app like Hinge. And I'll be like, oh, what tokens are you in? And they always say, these dudes always say Dogecoin. And so it just shows that it is that hook that you can pick that. And so it adds utility. It gets people in, even though that there isn't any utility behind it. And I love a project that has utility. But I think that meme coins really are a big thing. And they are something that, you know, we should all be looking into because it brings more people into the community. And that's what we want. That's what we want within crypto is we want more normal people to get in because then that helps us too. That's actually a fantastic point. I've always thought if you went into the street and asked 100 people what Dogecoin is, a lot of them would know. If you asked them what Ethereum is, a lot of people wouldn't know. So great point, uh, Fashion Coder. Meme coins uh, you know, bring mass adoption. And that is our time, uh, time, guys. What a fantastic space today. Shout out to Reddit for coming up here um, and really doing a great presentation of the project. Shout out to all the speakers, Krasik, Reddit, uh, Fashion, Roaring Kitty, Nick, Block, and everybody else who spoke, uh, Maddie. And, of course, uh, shout out to AJ. AJ, close this out, man. Yeah, no problem, Rodney. Great time sharing the stage with you today. It's always a good time. You're always full, full of knowledge. Full of knowledge. One of the hardest working people in crypto. Shout out to my guy, Rodney. Um, man, your YouTube channel has been on the come up too. I, I've, I've been, I've been watching your stuff. You've been killing it, man. But, uh, but yeah, but shout out to uh, the RDDT, the Reddit project. I wish them the best of luck. Thanks for coming on the show, everybody in the in the house. About two thousand people. Make sure you smash the like button if you haven't already, and uh, go give some love to all, all the speakers on stage and the Reddit project as well. I'm going to uh you know drink some juice uh maybe some tea or something i've been gnarly AJ, for a couple of days AJ, but... right quick. can i hit something to aj if you must but we are closing the show yes i really i really have to because i wasn't able to uh, contribute something until now people from the community know me as dj snoo e120 e120 like our contract ends and i'm running every two two days i'm running the dj show on our telegram channel so guys uh, I, I don't know if we're doing any of the, uh, you know, this, this space is about, yeah. yeah, so. Yeah, good job. But yeah, I was just saying that I'm not feeling the best, so, you know, I'm going to try to get better. If, and if you are feeling well out there, never take your health for granted. And certainly um, take some immune boosters, vitamin C, vitamin D, all the things that uh, your parents or your aunts and uncle always tell you to take and you always ignore them. Maybe, maybe you should listen to, to Aunt Sue. Aunt Sue knows what she's talking about, and I wish I listened to her too. So with that being said, I do appreciate each and every one of you. Thanks for coming out uh, and spending your, uh, your afternoon with us here on this Thursday, April 18th. Let's get on with this Bitcoin halving. Let's get on with this bull run. We got you know a little bit of time, but you know, you know, time takes time, and just be patient in this market. You know, If you get impatient, you get emotional, that, that's the one way to, to just mess yourself up. So you know, get Get rich. Don't get wrecked. Have a safe rest of your day. Rodney, I appreciate you. Shout out to Mario. Shout out to the roundtable. Shout out to all our speakers in the Reddit project. My name is AJ Rice Crypto. Have everybody have a safe rest of your day. Later.